and welcome everybody to Law and Crime Daily. I'm Jesse Weber. The Lori Vallow murder trial in Idaho took a break on Monday as one of the attorneys mourns the loss of a family member. So the courtroom was dark for the whole day, but that doesn't mean we don't have a lot to talk about with this trial. So let's get right into it. Lori Vallow and her husband, Chad Daybell, reportedly believe that people had either light or dark souls and that the darkest souls could be considered zombies. So last week, Vallow's former best friend, Melanie Gibb, testified that Vallow not only told her that she believed her own children could have dark spirits, but that the she felt called to get the dark spirit out of Tammy Daybell. This is Chad Daybell's wife. And within weeks of Tammy's death, Chad and Lori were married on a beach in Hawaii. Her two children, JJ Vallow and Tylee Ryan, had been missing for months when the remains were later found on Daybell's property. And according to the medical examiner, Tylee was dismembered and burned. JJ was bound with duct tape and buried. On Friday, an interesting witness took the stand. Zulema Pastenis was a friend of Lori and Chad's and even married Lori's brother, Alex Cox. Unfortunately, he died just two weeks into their marriage. The prosecutor asked Zulema about the group's beliefs in things like past lives and evil spirits, as well as why she believed all of this. He told me that I had, was, um, I had been Lori's daughter during that probation or during that time that I, or during that life that I had been um, um, killed at a very young age, at age 14, that I had been um, raped, and then that my body had been dismembered um, by um, the Lamanites, and I was killed at the same time that um, Lori was when she was my mother during that life. Lori and Chad were very um, <clears throat> aggressively um, trying to convince me to move to Rexburg. And um, we talked a lot about him saying that I needed to move to Rexburg. Why did they want you to move to Rexburg? They kept telling me that uh, part of my mission was to be there and that I needed to help them um, build Zion there and that I just needed to move there. Lori is um, very convincing, um, vivacious way of expressing things um, are very um, charming and believing plus the fact that she had expressed before that she had been visited by all these heavenly beings. Therefore, um, if someone is telling the truth about that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be questioning them, I would be believing they're telling the truth because I would never think that someone would lie about something as sacred as that. Okay, my co-hosts are here to break this down. Defense Attorney Brian Buckmeyer, former trial attorney Terry Austin. Brian, so Zulema gave the prosecution the casting of dark spirits, but also talked about them making money off of the children's social security and a call where Lori was really mad before Tammy's death. Is all of that enough to convict Lori? Jesse, I've been pushing back on this case saying I don't know if it's all there yet or if there's a very there to speak of, but as you hear more and more, I think it's getting closer to conviction. The reason why I say that is I don't think they're going to be able to get the affirmative there was a, a plan or, or a conspiracy or, or how exactly Lori aided and abetted in the murder of these two children and her husband's ex-wife, but I'm seeing less and less of a reasonable doubt when you look at all of these situations surrounding them and their belief of these spirits and casting out, put mm -hmm. together. All right, well, I think we can agree, Terry, Zulema is a key prosecution witness, but she believed Lori, followed her instructions. Is she a credible witness? Couldn't she be charged with a crime if she's following everything she did? You know, it's interesting. She reminds me so much of Melanie Gibb. They both are soft-spoken. They both did whatever Chad and Lori said, not to the extent that Alex did, but still they followed what they were told. And I think that at the end of the day, she's not going to have anything that would implicate her in the conspiracy or in the murders. She didn't aid in a bet. We haven't seen any evidence to that effect just yet. What she is establishing, though, is the exact same thing that Melanie 
recently established that they were light and dark ratings and that these ratings were put on other people and that now these people are gone. So she's corroborating what Melanie Gibbs said. And in a way, this intoxicating nature of this belief system and how people were drawn in, I think that's clear as well. Still ahead on Long Crime Daily, more peculiar testimony from Zulema Pastenis as we continue our coverage of the Lori Vallow Daybell trial. As she was working to cast out dark spirits, did Zulema believe what she was doing was hurting Tylee and JJ? Her answer, up next. Coverage of the Lori Vallow Daybell triple murder trial in Idaho continues now. The so-called doomsday cult mom is accused of being involved in the deaths of two of her children, Tylee Ryan and J.J. Vallow, as well as her new husband's wife. Now, Zulema Pastenis, who we talked about earlier, Lori's friend and one-time sister-in-law, testified about her personal and spiritual experiences. But on cross-examination, the defense asked her about the idea of casting out dark or evil spirits. You didn't think that this was... Any, anything evil or anything bad? No. Okay. Not at the time. But, but you've since then come to think that it was evil or bad? There are two children that have died and a mother of five that have died. Um, I will consider that evil, yes, sir. And you believe that your casting out of spirits had some direct effect on two children that died and the spouse of another person that died. My belief is that... Um, I'm sorry, that's just a yes or no question. Objection. I asked it should be allowed to answer. And I think that counsel can handle that on redirect. I agree. It was just a leading yes or no question. So why don't you re-ask the question, Mr. Thomas, or I can have the <coughs> reporter indicate what it was. So uh, to my recollection, what you're saying is you believe that your uh, work on casting had a direct effect on the two children that died and the uh, spouse of the person died that died. Not my work, but Chad and Lori's work did. Okay. Yes. All right. Terry, what points do you think the defense is trying to establish in that cross-examination there? I think several points. Most of his cross was very minor, though. At that point, he was trying to say that the casting out, did she really believe that that worked? Did she think that what she did affected the children? And I thought her answer was excellent. She said, no, I mean, I believe in casting out. She later went on to say, it's in the Bible, and I do believe in that. And I think he tried to make it look bad that she had this belief. I think that was a mistake. And she made it very clear that she wasn't planning on any deaths, that that was Lori and Chad. And she later stated that that is what is evil. So I thought she did a very good job on cross. The minor points he made were, you know, you came back after lunch and you knew more then, and were you looking at documents? Those are all minor points. And it could backfire against him. She's a soft-spoken woman. He's a male. He's cross-examining her. And the jury could look at that as if to say, you are being too brutal on her. So I don't think he made many points at all in that cross-examination. Well, Brian, the other way of looking at it is what makes her credible if she's believing these outlandish things? I think, Jesse, it's about credible for what purpose? Do I, am I going to go to a Bible study with her? Probably not. I, her version of, of, of religion is a little far off, I think, most people. But if we're talking about the outlandish and the crazy, and this is an expert who is guiding us uh, through that world, it's exactly like if a, a, a sister wife who had been trafficked got out of that environment and is telling us about it now, we would say, yes, you were trapped in a crazy situation, but if you're leading us down this path to explore and teach us more, I think for that purpose, she is credible and gives the prosecution a lot to work with in terms of the motive of both Lori and Chad Debo. I think I just want to highlight one more thing, and that is that by all accounts, this jury, this is the first time they're hearing about all of this, okay? We've been studying this for a long time. Imagine being them and being inundated with all of these stories and characters. Unbelievable.